Hello, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Vella. And mostly I read stuff that is either translated or that stayed under the radar. The, so not the most popular fiction. Um, this is what I read the last couple of days. I uh, read two fiction novels and one uh, non-fiction. I will start with the non-fiction one. This is called Zetun. It is by Dave Eggers. Zetun is um, a well-known name in the States. Um, so Zetun is, a, or Abdul Rahman Zetun is a Syrian guy who came to live in the States. He became a national, uh, he became a US citizen. He married an American lady who, be, who um, converted to Islam. And uh, they had a, well, they have a wonderful marriage and uh, lovely kids. And he started a contracting company in New, or New Orleans. Uh, well, New Orleans, that's the right pronunciation, I believe. New Orleans. And um, yeah, everything went very well. But then uh, Katrina came. And uh, Katrina flooded the whole city. And luckily his wife and his kids could get away in time, but he stayed behind to take care of the house, the business, and help his clients to board up uh, the houses. Everything goes relatively well uh, during the first couple of days. He took his canoe out and helped everybody he could. He saved about 50 people together with his uh, one of his tenants. I believe it was Todd or Ted or something like that. And um, yeah, they uh, did what they could for the community. And then, but he also noticed that the officials that were uh, patrolling um, didn't do anything. They didn't help, they ignored him completely. And uh, after day four, he was in his house with, together with his tenant and another person. And they were um, arrested, and uh, yeah, they were taken to uh, a makeshift prison, which was nothing but cages uh, outdoors, uh, no protection, nothing to sleep. Uh, there was just a, the, the ground, and they weren't even allowed to touch the, the fences. Nothing, and he asked why he was arrested. No response. If he could have his phone call, no response. So his wife stayed behind and heard nothing from him uh, for days on days on days on end. And she really thought that he uh, was dead. This is the story actually of how the American government is so fucked up that they can make people disappear. They can make them vanish. And um, we always thought that they did that somewhere in uh, Eastern countries or whatever, but no, no, uh, the States is, is really good at that either too. So he found out that uh, he wasn't arrested by the police, nor by uh, the military, he was arrested by FEMA. And apparently FEMA uh, doesn't have to give you a phone call or doesn't, have to give you any rights and uh, luckily he was able to talk to a priest and that priest uh, warned his wife that he was still alive but that he was in prison but he wasn't allowed to tell anything more because he feared for uh, repercussions and uh, his wife and his brother who lived in Spain at the time could get him finally out of prison after many, many, many weeks. So it was heartbreaking to read this, but on the other side, also heartwarming. It was uh, very well written. This is, uh, it reads like a novel. And it's necessary to read his story because uh, things like that happen more and more in the States where people disappear or are put in cages. They even put children in benches, uh, well, uh, dog benches. And can you believe that? The inhumanity. Um, uh, 
it's it's horrible to see how fucked up the state is really. But what is also very beautiful is the love between him, Zaytun, and his wife. Uh, the respect he has from the community. Uh, this is also a book about love and survival and family and yeah, it's it's really beautiful. So yeah, this is the story of Zaytun, Abdul Rahman Zaytun and uh, we all should read it. It's an absolute must read and beautiful. Then another book. Um, this one I got for free. It's called A Frog in English. It's by the Chinese author Mo Yan. Mo Yan is uh, the Nobel Prize winner for literature in 2012. And uh, this is the story of an author who uh, wants to write a biography of his aunt. So this story begins in the 60s, 70s, when Mao Zedong was still in, in power. And um, he decides to have the one-child policy. And at the beginning, uh, everybody laughed about it, because how are you going to check uh, when we are having sex and whatever? And they really laughed with it. They were handed uh, condoms, and but they used them as balloons and stuff like that. But soon, very soon, they realized that it's absolutely reality. And um, uh, why write, does he write a story about his aunt? Well, his aunt is um, a sort of a, a midwife. And uh, she was the hero at the beginning of the, the town and, and the, uh, yeah, the area where she lived. But quickly, she becomes the villain because she really uh, wants to force the one-child policy upon the people. And she forces women to have abortions and men to have vasectomies. And uh, yeah, she is a thoroughly, thoroughly hated woman. And so he writes her story. And uh, while he writes that story and uh, you realize how profoundly impactful this one-child policy was on the Chinese people because it's so unnatural, you know. Uh, it's in our nature, in our being to have children. You can, of course, always decide not to have children and that's, but that's a, a, an intellectual choice. Um, but if you are forced not to have children, that's something completely different. And for many people, one child was just wasn't enough. And, and they wanted the warmth of a family. And um, uh, he tells the story, it starts from um, the beginning of the 60s or, or mid 60s up until the 2000s. And, he really shows with humor and very tactile language, very visceral language, how this has an impact on everybody involved. The people who enforces uh, the rule and the people who have to endure the rule. And uh, he shows how they react on commercials with babies. And yeah, it's, it's uh, utterly painful, but also funny at times. And uh, uh, I really like the ending. It, it's very uh, unconventional. So people were put off by the uh, ending, but I liked it. I love uh, this um, sort of uh, unexpected endings. And um, yeah, I highly recommend. I'm, I'm definitely going to read more of Moyan. Um, because I'm really curious about his other stuff. So this is, when I look at Goodreads, this is not his most popular book. Um, so yeah, I really want to read more. I, I highly enjoyed it. I absolutely enjoyed it. And then another book that I really enjoyed is uh, by a Dutch author called Anna Enquist. And she... Uh, wrote the story, uh, mostly she writes poetry, and you can imagine if a poet writes a novel, it's always something special. 
and the language is always very well done and um, meticulous and beautiful, powerful. Um, but it's also uh, poetic and soft and gentle, although the story is horrible. Not horrible, it's um, so. <laughs> let me restart. So, Anna Enquist uh, read this book. This is, of course, the Dutch version, uh, uh, I'm Dutch speaking, but um, uh, this is translated in the in, in the in, in English uh, uh, as the homecoming. This is uh, the story told by the wife of James Cook, you know, the. James Cook is the famous uh, traveler, uh, the, the, the man who put uh, a lot of the world on the map, and uh, his story is told by uh, Elizabeth Bartz. Elizabeth Bats, sorry, um, is waiting for her husband to come home after a, a three-year trip uh, around the world, and um, a lot of things have happened while he was away, so she has already three children. Uh, a third died, died while uh, during his trip, and then he comes back. Then you notice how warm and loving the couple really is, although they don't see each other much. And then he goes on another trip for three or four years, and again, uh, she has to lose one of two children, and uh, he comes back, and they have another child, I believe. In total, they have uh, six children, and um, yeah, it's 1775, so uh, child loss is, is a common thing. Uh, Stillborn uh, children that die after a couple of years is a normal thing. And uh, yeah, while he is away, she has to endure all those horrible things. And uh, finally, he leaves on his final trip. And then after four years, she receives the news that he is killed somewhere in Haiti. And is eaten. What a story, but still um, people find it, some people find it very bleak and sad and others find it also warm and beautiful. I'm in the second camp. I found this book extremely, extremely well written and with lots of, lots of emotion, um, with lots of respect for both people. Um, they clearly loved each other, um, they clearly respected each other. Um, I really loved the way, uh, whenever he came back, the way they had to get used to each other again, uh, to each other's company. And, uh, but there was always love and respect for each other. It was a warm household in a way, and but more and more, uh, she struggled with the loss and his absence. And um, you learn a lot uh, in the, during this, while you read this book. Um, what's also very important to know is that Anna Inquist herself has lost a child. So she really knows what she's talking about. And uh, that make, uh, this makes it even more powerful. So yeah, it's an... Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful book, The Homecoming, by Anna Inquist, uh, a Dutch author. Uh, it was the first time that I read uh, Anna Inquist. I didn't even know she was Dutch. Um, I hope you have some really great reading to do too. Um, I have, uh, that's for sure. Um, please also uh, comment, uh, I will respond almost immediately, well, during the daytime or evening. Um, and also drop me recommendations. I was recommended uh, Waiting Years by Fumiko Enchi, 
by one of my uh, viewers and uh, I have ordered it right away. So I'm looking forward. It will arrive in a couple of days. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading that. And uh, yeah, um, keep it up. Keep reading, keep enjoying books and talk about books and uh, ask me questions, whatever, drop me a comment. I love it. I, the more we interact, the more I love it. So, yeah, uh, talk to you later and uh, bye-bye. <laughs>